Hi, it's Don Southerton and the weekly episode of Everything Korea. This week I've titled it Branding in Asia. Let's get started. Much of my client work supporting Korea facing business involves mentoring, marketing, creative, and media leadership in teams. Now, this has ranged from one-on-one -on -one onboarding of new chief marketing officers and chief creatives to the CEOs and COOs of new agencies of record, as well as our ongoing support for their entire teams. Now, uh, in fact, I've also interacted with most of the top A-list, ad, digital, media, and marketing groups and their organizations. So this has given me some perspective. Now, I've come to find branding especially fascinating and piquing my interest. More so, the Korean and Asian approach to the market in contrast to the West. Now, one resource I'd like to share and stands out is called Branding in Asia. It's a magazine. Uh, I've embedded right about here the link to it. Now, they provide a wealth of information for the industry into Asia's diverse and widely varied tastes. In particular, Branding in Asia explores exciting new ideas and concepts, uh, both creative and on the marketing and branding side, that are exploding across uh, Asia. Uh, I think it'd be great for you to subscribe. Now, it's only timely that I was asked to share some thoughts in their magazine. Uh, I've included two of the Q&As from the profile. For the full article, you can go into the website that I've also embedded in here. So the first question I've answered was, what is the biggest change you've seen in, in business culture in Korea over the years? My answer, for starters, change is constant within the Korean companies. As for corporate culture, Korean companies have found that they've been, as they expand operations overseas, the rigid norms and practices that worked well domestically needed to be adopted to the local markets. Uh, in turn, the gap in culture is well recognized by HQ teams in Korea because they're in daily interactions with the West. Most recently, the leading Korean brands have crafted more global savvy corporate visions, core values, and communication. And this reflects their international footprint and also their diverse workforces. In many cases, I've actually been the one developing and sharing these programs worldwide and still continue to do that. Second question, you've said that Korea is a place for companies to start before moving into neighboring markets like China and Japan. Can you talk more about that? My answer is international market entry can be a huge challenge for Western brands looking for new opportunities. I've long seen Korea as providing a sound entry point for further expansion to China, Japan, India, Vietnam. Now ever growing, Korean companies have divisions in these countries and have strong international business networks and supply chains. They're already in place. So options include partnering with for a Western company uh, and forming a joint venture or a licensing agreement with a local Korean firm. First for expansion and for uh, moving into that Korean market and then for the rollout across East Asia. Again, the full article with all the questions and that uh, appear in this week's issue of Branding uh, in Asia. I've embedded the link again so that you can go and read the full article. So, one last thing. Have a Korea-facing situation that needs addressing. Need some insights into Korean-facing business or branding in Asia. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. In many cases, we can provide you solutions or point you in the right direction. My personal assistant, Stacy, uh, uh, will coordinate a time for us to chat by phone, meet, or handle it by email. I've embedded her email in here also. So until next time, this is Don Southerton wishing you and all uh, yours all the very best. Thank you.